Hello students, in this video we'll introduce two very important functions in number theory. We're going to define theta of s to be the sum over n and z e to the negative pi n squared s. Okay? This is, a, this is a simple example of a theta function. Okay? Now, why is this function important? We'll come to that in just a moment here. But one thing I want to do is I want to derive a functional identity for this theta function because I know properties of the Fourier transform of such, such terms over here. And so if we recall the Poisson summation formula, so Poisson summation gives us an identity for this sort of an expression. Poisson summation says that the sum over n and z of f of n for sufficiently decaying functions is the sum of n and z of the Fourier transform, like that, okay? And so we also know that e to the negative pi x squared Fourier transforms to e to the negative pi x c squared, okay? So in particular, if I'm thinking of this as my function, if I think my f of x is e to the negative pi s squared, so then e to the negative pi, that would be, if I had s squared, it'd be a square root of s x squared by the scaling laws for Fourier transform, well, Fourier transform to 1 over the square root of s, e to the negative pi, and then xc over root s squared. So this is exactly equal to just 1 over, 1 over s, e to the negative pi, xc squared over s, okay? So by Poisson summation, this is equal to what? So by Poisson summation, This is equal to the sum over n and z of 1 over root s e to the negative pi n squared over s. So this is equal to 1 over root s, the same function theta, at 1 over s. And so this is our functional identity for the theta function. So here's our functional identity. Okay. That theta of s is equal to 1 over the square root of s, theta of 1 over s. This identity plays a very important role in the study of the Riemann zeta function. Okay? All right, good. And so now what I want to do is I want to define another function that sort of breaks the symmetry of this thing over here. So if we consider the function psi of s, which is 1 half of theta of s minus 1. If I subtract 1 from theta, that eliminates the 0 term, because when n is equal to 0, I get a 1, so that, take, so that all that's left if I subtract 1 are the positive terms and the negative terms. Every positive term corresponds to a negative term, and those are the same by the evenness of n squared. So this is exactly just the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity of e to the negative pi n squared s. Great. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to consider the following expression. So now consider now the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s over 2 minus 1 and then psi of t dt. Okay, and we consider this expression as a function of s, right? And so what will this function of s be? This function of s is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s over 2 minus 1. And then we put this infinite series in here, the sum over n going from 1 to infinity of e to the negative pi n squared s. And then we have a uh, t, of course, not s. It's a t, dt. I'm going to pull that infinite series out. So this is going to be the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity of what? Of the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the s over 2 minus 1. And then e to the negative pi n squared t, dt, like that. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to define a new variable over here. I'm going to let tau be this whole expression over here. Let's let tau be pi and then n squared t. Okay? So if I change variables to tau, what does this become? This becomes the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity. Okay? 
When t is equal to zero, tau is equal to zero. When t is equal to infinity, tau is equal to infinity. So the limits of integration don't change, zero to infinity. Then I have t to the s over two minus one. That's the same as pi over n. So that's the same thing as tau over pi n squared, n squared to the s over two minus one. And then e to the negative tau, e to the negative tau. And then a dt, but dt is d tau over pi d tau over pi n squared. Okay? Cool. Now, final step over here. So this says this is equal to the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity. Let's take track of the n's over here. So what do we really have? We have a pi over here, and we have a pi in the, with a negative one, so the negative one, in, this negative one in the pi and that pi are gonna cancel out, and this n squared to the negative one, that n squared in the denominator will cancel out, so we're gonna have a total of what? We're gonna have a total of pi to the negative s over two in the denominator, and then what's, how, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have an n squared to the s in the denominator over here, and uh, n squared to the s, n to the s, and then the integral from zero to infinity of tau to the s over 2 minus 1 e to the negative tau d tau, like so. And what this is, is this is exactly equal to what? So we've just proven that this integral over here, this thing over here is pi to the negative s over 2. Then this is going to be the Raymond zeta function at s. And then this is going to be gamma of s over 2, gamma of s over 2. So we've just proven the following relationship. We've just proven that the integral from zero to infinity of this function t to the s over two minus one, this function psi of t dt is equal to what? Is equal to pi to the negative s over two, the Riemann zeta function at s, and then gamma of s over two. Okay, and so this relationship over here will help us prove the functional identity for the Riemann zeta function and basically allow us to analytically continue the Riemann zeta function to the complex plane in the way that we traditionally do. Thank you very much.